Strategy and Insider Exploring Future Trends and Their Impacts Welcome to the sixth episode of our Strategy and Insider podcast, where we aim to explore some of the most critical future trends and their impacts. My name is Thomas Solbach, and I'm a partner at Strategy and, and the host of the first podcast season. In each of our episodes, we discuss some of the most fundamental questions in the healthcare industry with various experts like bioinformaticians, physicians, global pharma executives, health investors, and last time, a representative from government. And while enjoying an impressive view on the Arabian Gulf with uh, Dr. Hamed Al Hashemi from the Department of Health in Abu Dhabi, I'm having the pleasure to be now back in winterly Europe here in Berlin. And last time we did talk about how Abu Dhabi was able and, and managed to structure their ideation process to set up the country, but also the whole region for innovative health projects, generate trust for their new care model that they are about to install and um, how they make better synthesis of data that they have already generated and will be generating in future. And today I'm really thrilled and honored to welcome Peter Albitz uh, to today's episode, who is the chairman of the management board here in uh, Germany at Pfizer. And he will shed some light from the biopharmaceutical perspective on the future of healthcare. Peter actually is a biologist by train and also studied law and starting his career at Pfizer back in 1996 as a pharmaceutical consultant and then quickly assuming management positions in sales and marketing, being appointed to the managing director and head of primary care business back in 29. And since March, actually 15, he is the chairman of the management board. And apart from his corporate responsibilities, Peter is also very active and involved in various associations and foundations and boards and working groups um, in Berlin, outside of Berlin, throughout the country. So, Peter, very warm welcome. It's really a pleasure having time to spend with you now. Thank you, Thomas. My pleasure to be here. Super. I heard uh, you speak uh, both in interactions that we had personally, but also in, in latest uh, interviews that you gave very passionately about healthcare, about digitization, about new trends that will transform how we live healthcare in these days and in the future to come. You seem always very passionate about these topics. So it would be great if you can share some, some thoughts and shed some light why, why you're so passionate about that. Yeah, happy to do so. So, you know, first looking at this, these themes, I think what we experience is we are living in transformative times, right? I think digital technology is, is changing the way we work, the way we communicate, the way we socialize, the way we, we live our lives. I, I think that's, that's what we all see and feel. And what we also now can see is that health and healthcare um, have become a central focus of this change and, and transformation. And that is happening on an individual level as well as on a collective and on a global level. And I think especially, you know, the, the power of AI-based analytics of big and large data might become as transformative as the steaming engine was for the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. So, you know, I think we are about to redefine health, healthcare and life science. Very true what you're saying. And um, I don't know whether you've seen that paper very recently also published in Nature, I think beginning of January 2020 now, so literally a couple of days back, where Google AI outperformed radiologists in reading out mammograms um, and better diagnosing breast cancer than renowned um, uh, radiologists, improving both the false positive as well as the false negatives and it was significantly of course and in addition to resulting in better outcomes also reducing uh, yeah workload by about 90 percent yeah so this is kind of the essence of the future i guess yeah this is fascinating because you know what has been predicted for quite some time becomes now real and tangible right so we can really see exactly that this is relevant right i mean this can really you know change our capabilities for early diagnosis and screening and this can, you know, 
complement you know the abilities of physicians and clinicians this is a long a deep debate in itself you know how that will turn out into the future but absolutely fascinating to see what is already possible today exactly and it's there as you say in the past everyone has been talking about it that it might come at some point it's there and it's in nature right it's a peer reviewed superb journal and they are acknowledging it i, I think it's uh, it's now a step change that we're seeing True. so we're we're already jumping into the topic but uh, let me jump two three steps back because i uh, of course coming here and, and seeing you today in, in the podcast i did also do some uh, research in the back and uh, i've seen that especially in let's say younger years yeah, you have been traveling really a lot and especially to indonesia and and also being uh, taking responsibility there and forcing funding programs for environmental protection also another thing that you are you're passionate about how does that relate to you the environmentalism with pharma and and what have you learned kind of in your time in asia and, and traveling around that you're bringing back to europe and to healthcare Right. Yeah. Uh, let me share some insights yeah. on, my, on my personal life. I, mean, I think first point, you know, looking back, you know, what I realized is my, my path in life has never been linear, you know, with a single focus on one destination. So knowing this is where I want to be and, and go for that. I mean, I rather took an, I would say, exploratory okay. approach and sometimes adventurous approach, you know, and for me, it was always important to learn. You know, to make new experiences. I think that what fuels me, gives me energy and has kind of guided me, you know, through my life and what I did. You know, how did I come to Pfizer? That's a story <laughs> on its own. Uh, we, we might share at a coffee uh, later. But you know, in a way, you know, it was in the mid 90s where I happened to get in touch with Pfizer, you know, kind of by coincidence. You know, the company made an interesting impression to me, you know, dynamic medicine due to my studies in biology was kind of close and familiar and you know it it was the opportunity for a, a new experience so i joined you know and interesting enough this journey now continues uh, since more than 20 years you know which which <laughs> which which kind of kind of is interesting um looking at this question you know what is my life as you know a biologist and traveling you know through through indonesia to do with pharma today i think you know first it looks like pretty different things, right? And when I started to join... I would say so, yeah. Yes, yeah, and it is. I mean, when I started to join, that clearly was the case, you know, and friends of mine, you know, came to me, looked at me and asked, oh, seriously, you, know, you, you as the nature, you know, the adventure, you're going to, to boring, boring, big <laughs> pharma? Um, are, you, are you sure? I said, well, you know, uh, it's my decision. I think it's a good next way to make new experiences. So, so I, I joined. Let me take it maybe to a, to a, a different level, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we are celebrating uh, this year the, the 250th birthday of Alexander von Humboldt, right? Yep. I mean, one of the, I think, big, you know, naturalist explorers, adventurers of, of, of history, right? Um, a fascinating uh, historic figure and man. And, you know, there is a, there's an interesting episode, you know, which he's noted in his, his notebook, which was in 1802, you know, he was in South America and exploring mm -hmm. South America. He climbed the Mount Chimborazo in, in Ecuador. Uh, this mountain was supposed to be the highest mountain in the world. Okay. Uh, at that time, he climbed up to 5,500 meters, could not get up really to the top uh, due to conditions. But then he stood up there and he, then he looked down the tropical rainforest, right? And then he had an enlightenment, like looking at it and saying, Hey, in nature, everything is connected and everything is interdependent. And that formed what we today call ecology, right? I think yeah. that it was a very different perspective on the way we, we looked at nature. I think that has you know, formed your know, scientific careers and pathways, you know, like Charles Darwin and others who all refer to him. Uh, fascinating. Now, take that point you know, and apply it to health. And healthcare, how much you know, does that apply to healthcare? Yeah. Everything is interdependent. Everything is connected. And I think that's what we can look and learn from this ecological perspective. It takes a holistic approach yeah. right, to truly meet the needs of patients. It takes a holistic approach to truly be able to drive health outcomes and be successful with that. I think that's something we, we see now as a shortfall in the system. So even if this is a bit of meta level, I think still there's a deep truth in it which can guide us in the further path, you know, how healthcare uh, should evolve. And, and I couldn't agree more with you that there is a lot of 
deepness into that because what we're seeing today also when we talk about the future of healthcare we talk about of course it will be digital of course it will be data enabled and data driven it will be human at the same time but we want to rather not cure a disease but prevent a disease we, we need to kind of get into people's lifestyles and behaviors to, in order to make the right choices uh, available for people i mean this to be said is only possible if we as individual players that are caring for people's health are converting interests and, and work in ecosystems together around the well-being of a human or a patient at some point. So I'm totally with you. We can learn a lot from ecology, yeah, as you say, what, what you've experienced there. So with that said, um, that the healthcare industry um, and how we deliver healthcare is changing rapidly. Also, you made a, a recent statement that you think the value in healthcare that is generated and, and what we value as being valuable yeah, needs to be redefined. And A, can you please elaborate on this? Uh, what do you mean with that? And what also probably you personally and, and Pfizer is doing towards that direction? I think that that is a, a very important question and starting point. And I think, you know, actually it all starts with a very fundamental reflection, which is, um, what does health mean for life? Yeah. What does health mean for us, you know, individually and collectively? And, you know, there's this famous saying, uh, which is well known, health is not everything, but without health, nothing really is kind of worthwhile, right? I think that's something we Very often true. cite to yet, where our priorities as individuals and as society do not really reflect that. You know, we tend to invest much more into you know, our cars, um, traveling, you know, entertainment, um, uh, fashion, whatever, right? Then into our health. And that is true for not only money, it's, it's true you know, when you look at our time and attention, you know, wh where we direct it to. So clearly we see you know, that that does not match. And th that's also, interesting enough, true from a, from a societal perspective. Um, the way how we look at health, you know, we look at health... Um, let me let me paint it a bit black and white. You know, we tend to look at health primarily as something burdensome, a cost mm -hmm. uh, which needs to be be handled with and managed and paid for. Uh, I think that's a bit the way uh, we deal with this. And I think you know, bottom line, this is a narrow, this is a reductionist, and I would go so far and say, this is kind of a cynic way to look at health because it does not reflect at all the critical importance and the value health offers to us mm. right as individuals for life for happiness for our well-being all of that i mean it's a fundament for that right so i think that's the first point and the second point back to what we've just discussed in terms of healthcare systems it completely underestimates and does not give credit to the critical importance health plays for our economic and social prosperity right mm -hmm. the narrow view just misses, misses completely the opportunities which health and life science represent in these transformative times, you know, for, for our future competitiveness, for progress and, and all of this, right? So, you know, uh, when you start with this reflection, you clearly see the big you know, kind of mismatch, you know, we're, we're facing today on an individual and on a, on a collective level. And to contribute to, to what you have been saying, actually, I have the feeling also personally, but also being with friends and, and family and others, you only care about health if you're not healthy. But uh, how many days uh, during the year you were waking up in the morning and say, hey, I'm healthy, great that I'm healthy, uh, superb, yeah? uh, versus once you're sick, how many times you are complaining about being sick in that moment, right? And we, we only care about not being healthy, um, uh, rather thanking that we are healthy. And that, that's kind of the cynical way that you're also Very describing. True. And, Very and true. It's, yeah. Take the one for granted, health, yeah, and, it's something and you complain about the other. Exactly. Right? But your uh, Porsche or Mercedes, you don't take for granted, and you sure. you honor it day by day once you're stepping into your car, right? It's, uh, it's yeah. Which cynical. is fine, but you can only enjoy it when you're healthy. I think that's true as that well. Is so true. don't forget that point, yeah. right? No, very true. Um, and we're we're also facing now statements that uh, that people are making i think you you, you have a, a similar perspective on that that ideally we should come into a new wave of rewarding health instead of 
caring for illnesses. And uh, of course, this is uh, easy set, hard to get. Yeah? What is your perspective on that, reverting the system towards, uh, yeah, caring for health. I think that that point is a, just a consequence of what we just discussed, right? Because if this is true, what, we, what we're saying, you know, we need to really reflect on, you know, how, how do we navigate you know, our activities towards? What's the goal? What's the aim, right? And with that point, um, you know, look at healthcare systems. You know, today, healthcare systems incentivize for input, for activity, Right. I mean, that's the way we, we uh, doctors get paid. That's the way hospitals get remunerated according to, to their DRGs. That's the way pharma, you know, we, medtech, biotech get paid for, for medicines and, and devices. And, you know, I think looking at this, it's not by intention, um, but this model rewards illness. Mm -hmm. right? Right. That's just true. That is happening, right? Um, because we guide the money according to that. And this is not what we want. And this is not how it should be, you know, very, very clearly and, and simply said. We should reward and incentivize for health, for keeping people healthy, for curing people. We should incentivize for outcomes, right? Yeah. For the result. And that's, I think, the big paradigm shift, I think, which healthcare systems um, need to be need to be transformed, transformed into. Now, this is a big one. I mean, let's not forget, I mean, the system, this is a system which not, you know, just uh, is working that way in Germany. It's nearly working in all developing countries, more or less the same way. Yeah. And this, it's a long time since those systems have been applied due to lacking valid alternatives, yeah. right? So why do we think we can change it now, right? I think we have. We have an opportunity. I think that digitalization, the opportunities of digitalization now open us a new door to change that system. And that is true, I think, because of many different aspects. One, one clearly is that we will be able to measure now the outcomes of health intervention because mm -hmm. we'll be able to analyze those data sets, real world data sets. I think that's a, one very important aspect because then you can really say, now I pay for the outcome because we are really able to measure it and allocate it to you know, whoever contributes. I think the second aspect uh, where we see the shortfalls of today's system is the silo and sector building in mm -hmm. the system. So now, you know, with, with the technology and digital infrastructure, you know, we can overcome that. We can connect sectors. You know, we can create joint easily, data yeah. spaces yeah. And, and care spaces so that the holistic way of managing health and, and, and helping patients can be applied. And the, and the third element, I think, which we cannot underestimate, comes from an individual level. We have an unprecedented opportunity um, to empower people, to empower patients. You know, give them Sorry, the knowledge, the tools and support they need to contribute to their own health, right? And to care for their, care own, for health. their own health, yeah. you know, and become just a very important part of all of that. So these are just three elements, yeah. but the three, three really fundamental ones, right, which I think open up a new door and a historic opportunity, I would say. Uh, uh, absolutely. And there is uh, some sort of pilots going on and one that sometimes obviously then jumps to mind is is project haven or the joint venture haven between amazon jp morgan berkshire hathaway because what they are doing is they are crossing some of the bridges uh, um, of, of those healthcare players that that more need to work in concert um, second uh, they are running their first virtual Uh, primary care clinics. Uh, so they are a provider uh, as Amazon. They bought PillPack being a wholesaler, potentially more to come, who knows. But the, the point that I want to make is here, there is an immediate reaction between a company and its employees. Because if your employees are more healthy this year than the last year before, then your employees are more effective and you can produce more. So there is a direct link to the benefit of this company, meaning that the doctors working for an Amazon or a JP Morgan or whatever, they should be incentivized by making the employees healthier from year one to year two, yeah, rather than saying, how many CT scans as a doctor have you conducted this year? Now, transverting this from a company perspective to society, of course, is a big jump. But in small steps, we're seeing this can happen and it is possible. So that's kind of a, an example that, that sometimes jumps to mind in, in these Absolutely, in, I think it goes, it goes absolutely the right way. And it's the way we have to learn, right? Because we have the bit, before we will have the 
big change in the system, we need to experiment with those examples that it works out, right? yeah. that it really benefits the way we want or that we learn, you know, what we could change to, to do this. And look, you know, just uh, as you mentioned, and we said before, look how much health, you know, plays a significant role in different aspects. One is the productivity, you know, uh, which, you know, your employees yeah. have. The other one, you know, when you do this is, is attractiveness as a company. I mean, you're, you're a great employer, right? And people will have to join you if they see you're caring yeah. for their health and supporting some. So already you have two quite important elements, you know, for your prosperity as a, as a company. On that note, because we were discussing that different industry perspectives and, and participants need to more act in concert, um, as we would say, um, as you are the speaker of the health cluster here in Berlin, and um, this is a place where members of clinics, of insurances, of researching companies come together and do cooperate. Um, how does this work um, day to day and, and what are you basically working on? What's your direction that you're taking as a health cluster? Um, we, we referred to that point before. It's all about collaboration. Mm -hmm. It's all about joining forces. No one, no single you know, company, player or sector will be able to drive that change. You know, it's, yeah. it's only you know, in, in bringing this together. Now, looking, looking at Berlin, the, the health cluster in Berlin and Brandenburg you know, is, a, is, a, is a fascinating um, ecosystem. Right? I mean, you know, when, I, when I started you know, to take the position as speaker you know, and dive deeper into it, I, I was impressed you know by by the variety of players which we have here and the richness right we, we okay. have i mean we have we have world-class science right we have cutting edge um our research top hospitals clinics rehab centers numerous biotech pharma medtech companies place, huh? you know startup a lively startup community you know, nearly you would say everything you know, which which it would take and this all this is all you know here in in vicinity right i mean it's very oh very close together and we have urban centers and we have rural areas so you know it's an excellent place to experiment now yeah. i think that's that's the the one aspect when we when we look at from a different angle i would i would say yet we're not really deploying its potential Uh, at all, I would say, because you compare this with, you know, the, the other mm, world-class leading life science centers, you know, like, like the Boston, Boston area, New York, you know, um, San Francisco, or life science clusters in in China. You know, we are still far off when it comes to you know productivity for when it comes to the translation of knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, of, of scientific results into products and services. And creating companies, right? This is not yet what we've been able to do. So connecting all the dots. So what I'm passionate about is to address this, right? And just to activate and mobilize, you know, all these actors to join forces behind a bigger idea. And we've started to do that uh, last year, and we're, it's work in progress. So we are we're now uh, going to to finalize a master plan for the mm -hmm. years to come. This is this is work underway. But what we already have done is articulate that vision, and that you know, in essence is that we want to aim that this region, Berlin, Brandenburg, becomes a leading life science hub uh, globally, right? Playing, playing with the big life science uh, hubs on one, on one level. And the other aspect of it also that we make this a, um, a blueprint uh -huh. region when it comes to access to, you know, medicine access to um, health healthcare and latest and, and, and latest uh, developments basically. for the people right yeah. for the people in the region right i think that's that's kind of those two two aspects and yeah that's what we want to articulate and then you know let me wow. see let me see what will be possible that's right a bold so far and great vision so yeah? far yes and so far i see actually good resonance right when we when we you know come together with the actors so so yeah that that's absolutely um, a very big mission ahead and what we are also seeing here in berlin it's a very vibrant place also for healthcare startups yeah so if there is any place in germany at least if not europe then uh, someone has to have berlin on its radar and rightly so you also build your own berlin healthcare hub as you name it where you search for outside inspiration sharing knowledge and, and developing 
digital ideas and building those. Can you shed some light uh, on that and what are the type of solutions that you're looking for and working on? Yeah, no, th this is a passion of mine, you know, healthcare or healthcare hub. When we founded the healthcare hub um, in 2014, um, mm -hmm. this was an exploratory adventure. It right? must have been a It must have been because yeah, yeah. We, we've not done it before and we have not really had an idea at the beginning. So what, what, you know, what will that bring back? Now, what we intended to find out is, is you know, in, in reaching out and connecting with these entrepreneurs and startups, you know, is there, is there something where we can apply their creativity to addressing healthcare challenges and issues you know, in the indications and fields uh, we're in and, and making a difference right, to, to mm -hmm. a patient's lives. I think that was kind of the <clears throat> more fundamental view um, beyond let's look what is out there right, and yeah. understand and meet the, meet the people. You know, today, a um, couple of years later, uh, I would say we have become an integral part of, of this creative ecosystem. We're well connected. We're having you know productive interactions. So you know that has really that has really evolved um, to a, to it a, arrived. It seems huh? <clears throat> yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you know I think that the the mantra you know which um, we have um, used for healthcare, which is you know we build collaborations on on trust, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this is critically important on fairness and on eye level. This has resonated, right? And we are hired startup entrepreneurs you know who joined us mm -hmm. sometimes 50 50 they they remained working on their startup but then supported us and think this this kind of approach um, has has really helped us a lot and you know what what also has made us proud is that our health gap has become a blueprint for Pfizer uh, mm -hmm. globally I think we've been the first one uh, who built that up and now you know in Pfizer we have built uh, numerous other health caps you know um, uh, on that principle in all regions in the world so Uh, London, Stockholm, um, um, Tokyo, Sydney, you know, you name it, uh, they, they have built it up. So that, that was really nice. Um, That's impressive. So, uh, so, so that uh, really out of Germany, yeah? Huh? <laughs> out of Germany, right. Yeah, Great. so Germany was kind of the spark and then driver for all of that, which, which, which you know, of course, you know, we, we're really happy and, and proud about. And regarding collaboration, you know, there are several ones. So, you know, the, the first I, I would pick and highlight is, um, is a, a collaboration with Cotrium which uh, is a, a Danish um, mm -hmm. um, um, a startup and uh, entrepreneur and innovator, a medtech innovator. Quartum has developed a sensor, um, a mobile sensor for monitoring cardiac arrhythmia. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's kind of the first point. That's the critical pillar for the early detection of atrial fibrillation. And mm -hmm. atrial fibrillation, which many people don't know, is one of the most important risk factors for getting hit by a stroke. Mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of the, where the medical, the critical medical need uh, sits. Of course, it's a commercial opportunity, you know, much more for courtroom than, than for us. But you know, for us, it's an opportunity to show we are able to drive health impact and outcomes. Because just imagine, we are able to, to increase Increase also the number of patients diagnosed, and then they get treated and prevented by stroke. I mean, yeah. what an what an impact can you make even beyond the medicine? You know, yeah. they might be get treated with our medicine, they might get treated with another medicine. You know, but at the end, if they get prevented from stroke, what a great outcome! Yeah. I see. That's what I what I what I love. I mean, those kind of collaborations. There. And uh, can I just probe into uh, you mentioning the ups and downs of kind of that marriage? Uh, more to the downs. I mean, what what were your kind of biggest surprises that you came across or mistakes that that you uh, discovered that that you haven't expected to come can you name one or two that uh, you know that that we, made you we've think? seen yeah you yeah, know we we started to work with the startup in a way you know, due to our background and and expert we thought the startup you know, they also know about all these aspects of your know, market dynamics about internal processes and management and finance etc i mean They all have joined as startup entrepreneurs. They have to do all their same. And we are a company of, of more than 90,000 people, Big, grown yeah. in, in 100, 170 years. They've just started. So, yeah. yeah. And then we saw their shortfalls in those aspects. You know, no wonder, yeah, because they couldn't have everything ready. Yeah. So sometimes we say, hey, why, why have you not seen this? Why have you not built the case robust, um, uh, robust enough, you know, or, or thought through, you know, how that, how that would work out? Or early on, you know, um, started to address some shortfalls. I mean, they've also been fascinated by the technology. Mm -hmm. And maybe not yet, as we have already looked at, you know, what does it make it real and happen yeah. to bring it in the market. Uh, so what, what is needed for that one, like the approval process also as a medical device, etc. what studies are needed. And then 
what was, I think, great to experience is that the most important thing we could offer them was not money. Actually, we did, I mean, we invested a bit of money, but not a lot. The most important thing was knowledge, experience, yeah. our expertise in all those fields, clinical development, market access, you know, also some kind of business planning and, and business analytics, things which for us, you know, are quite, you know, uh, uh, not, nothing special, yeah. but for them, it mean everything because yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it complemented where, where they, where where they, they are strong. Yeah. And, and I think that back to the point of the healthcare hub, that's what has also, you know, at the start just surprised and I would even say overwhelmed us. You know, when we made the first invitations to startups, I'd say, ah, let's come to us, to so Pfizer in, 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 in Potsdam Platz yeah. at our headquarters and you, we invite you to, um, you know, there, there was some Coca-Cola and beer and, and some pretzels and nothing else. And then, you know, we'll talk a bit about, you know, what we do as Pfizer, about whatever, market access, you know, click et etc. You know, we thought, well, let's see, my 10, 12, my company. It was, I, I still remember those years back, the first evening, I came later from, a, from another event, and I came in and said, what's going on here? It looked like a party. There was 100 or more. The room was full. <laughs> Not full enough pretzels, of, probably. Like, yeah. the, like, <laughs> like good, old, good parties in, in, in our good old times. You know, full of people, energy, vibrant. And that was not happening once, right? I yeah. think that has continued to happen. You know, these startup exploratory So it uh, became lessons. an institution, it, it seems. It became so. an institution. And... And I think, and that's what we also, you know, felt like, wow, look what we have as capability, you know, which, you know, is so valuable for startups. But again, I mean, I think important to say vice versa, right? We have learned a lot from them, yeah. know, their agility, their creativity, Customers which where we invited yeah. startups to, you know, we call it healthcare. We call it actually healthcare 2020. <laughs> 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 which like, is now, where yeah. are we now? <laughs> in the year 2020. So, so that's what we brought them in and teach our people, right, on, on what's coming down the road and, yeah. and what do we need to prepare for, right? And get excited about. So, yeah, um, really a great Germany. As you were saying, you, you obviously these, these startups are superb in their agility and their speed and what they bring to market, how they experiment, um, how user-centric they are. At the same time, um, what is superbly important in healthcare, even more so than in other places of our life, is, is that you take society and the system, the whole healthcare system, with you on that solution or that journey that you're building because we we all want to have trust that that our data is is handled appropriately yeah? very true and uh, recently uh, back in 2019 uh, um, google was was also hit when they uh, went into collaboration with uh, ascension which is one of the largest us healthcare systems uh, caring for millions of lives in more than 20 states in the us and google getting access to patient level data Uh, be it um, uh, diagnosis, be it uh, treatment outcomes and, and uh, what have you. And with very good intention, uh, it seems, yeah, and uh, ultimately it seems also compliant, but still kind of under the radar, but with very good intentions in terms of building up clinical effectiveness and, and, and catering better patient safety in reading new insights into existing data. Now, this is something where, um, again, uh, Google did uh, probably not communicate too openly about it but this is obviously at a much larger scale than in a startup yeah? um, as they are talking millions of lives um, that they have access to this type of large scale strategic move that is going on from the tech players uh, for the time being in large extent is that also a possibility for for Pfizer what, what do you think Yeah, absolutely. And I think your know, first first point to, to just realize is you know, it's a it's a strategic imperative, uh, I would say, for for all of us to build these capabilities and to take advantage, right, of this I would say unprecedented and transformative potential, you know, which not only about you know AI, machine learning, and lots of big data, big data sets offered to us. So collaborations play play a critical role but i would like to make one point which i think uh, is is even you know more fundamental or, or comes before it and that is it's about i think in a first priority to build up these capabilities mm -hmm. internally yeah right? so that you you as a company you're shaping this 
foundation. And, and I think this is important that you're really able to drive the, the change needed and, and, and then succeed in, you know, you, we might call it the digital race, mm -hmm. which is up. And, you know, and we've, we've built up significant capabilities within Pfizer, you know, okay. especially last year. I think that was a big move, which we did under the leadership of our new digital officer, you know, who's joined us from, from, from Quest externally. Um, and that we, is at the global level. That uh, is at the glo yeah. that is at the global. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking now global yeah. level yeah. because yeah. you know those big collaborations, yeah. you know, happen happen of course you know, from a, from a from a global level, and you know, and we've built up this this dedicated Pfizer digital uh, mm -hmm. organization. Um, and have been able to recruit top experts in all all fields and levels of digital health. So I think that was a huge and big step in that direction, and this is complemented by external collaboration. Mm -hmm. That to me is 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 the right way to do it. And uh, and there there's numerous numerous of those those underway, um, especially of course in in clinical research, you know, where we where we work actually with Google. You know, verily uh, mm -hmm. we are we are well, well, part of you know, exploring those technologies and innovative ways. You know, there is a strategic collaboration with Flatiron to unlock the power of real world evidence in in oncology. And there's another one um, with with Cyaps, for example, um, a company which which accelerates precision medicine. Right, mm -hmm. so we're using also their access to data and 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 kind of take advantage of that. And then and I think this you know this way you know you build up your own capabilities. This empowers you to navigate right into the future. This empowers you and gives you the knowledge um, to make the right decisions on future collaborations, yeah. on future investment because you know. It might look great today you know, to collaborate with Google. Well, yeah. tomorrow there might be another company evolving you know, with a highly sophisticated you know, AI algorithm. And then this is your partner of choice. So you know, the key point is how are you, how are you able to make the right decisions you know, and act on it? So I think this still will be a very dynamic field. Yeah. So agility, you know, speed, right decision, but clearly also scale you know, will, be, will be important determinants. Uh, oh, that scale is absolutely important to have a data that really matters and a meaningful scale and, and yeah of data that you can read into and it's impressive to see that yes you are talking at a global level but that competitors of the past are more and more becoming partners because you were referencing flat iron flat iron is basically was bought out by Roche and yes. uh, all of a sudden Pfizer and Roche two of the the three biggest uh, pharma companies in the world are now collaborating um, through this arm of Roche. Um, it's impressive to see that boundaries are more and more getting blurred in the interest of the patient at the end of the day. Yeah? Um, so that, that is impressive to see. And on that note, um, I think we're, we're now in a new decade. And uh, in that decade, in the years to come, I think many of the public discussions around health and care will involve topics like what is actually technically possible, what are responsible costs to, to gather or to, to, to pay, um, what is ethically, morally right to do, whether it's about organ donation, uh, genetic researchers, um, stem cell therapies, usage of robots and machines and in, in care delivery, all these type of big hairy topics that we don't like to talk about that much but in essence it, it will be important to have this dialogue because technically a lot will be possible will it ethically be viable and liked by people we don't know yet right but what is your perspective on on this uh, set of very ethical questions um, that that we need to tackle as a yeah. society yeah you know um, as we already reflected on we are we are really facing a transformative change, a deep transformative change. The rules of the games, you know, are are changing. You know, and when you look at things like value, power, progress, this is all going to be redefined, right? In a way. So what what matters was plays a role. And I would say, you know, at this, from my perspective, still early stage of transformation. Mm -hmm. So personally, I think we're just at the beginning of of the transformation. I think mm -hmm. we'll see much deeper and, and uh, transformation coming. You know, most people do not yet have a, a full and thorough understanding of, of what that means for us uh, on a very on a very fundamental level. You know, take an example which we all which we all experience every day. We are using platforms like Google, Amazon, Facebook every day and feeling cool. Right? This is this is for free, yet that isn't true. Right? <laughs> we're just not aware that we are paying with the most valuable 
goods and currencies of the future, which is yeah. our personal and individual data. And that's the point. You know, data will be an incredible high value treasure in the future, in future societies and economies, right? And so what does it mean for us, right? That, that's the point. And, you know, just looking at health, uh, for health, data will be the source, the source of, of developing new breakthrough yeah. medicines, right? And, you know, which, you know, we'll be able to cure and overcome diseases potentially, which we could not even dream of today. I think yeah. that that is what is in that. And, um, and to your point, and, and that's also, again, I think very important, what comes first? At first, this is not, and, and most fundamentally, this is not a technological change. It just, it looks like, mm -hmm. but, you know, more fundamental, this represents, I think, in essence, a deep cultural change. And I wouldn't a go so way. far and say, and even, you know, a humanitarian challenge, mm -hmm. right, which, which is out there, which creates the uh, uncomfortableness, right, uh, yeah. around it. Because people, even if they don't know everything, but they feel something is changing and, and coming. So, you know, I think, you know, what, what is important for us is as, um, that we still, I would say, we still need to become kind of enlightened for this future game, yeah. right? So that, what does that, what does that mean? This game has, has started, and um, and I think we have an obligation and a necessity to educate people uh, on all those aspects. And 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 on that point, I mean, there is there is people saying, and and I'm not judging whether right or wrong, but people saying it's it's unethical um, to see certain type of data and generate insights into that. At some point, we might come into a uh, situational perspective that it, it's even unethical to not do it because if you would read into it you could do something good it would not be ethical to not do it because you're hindering innovation you're hindering better outcomes for patients you're hindering um, better safety for patients so it's clearly a decade um, that we're now starting uh, that would be full of change full of transformation and a um, lot of opportunities out Absolutely, and of course, challenges to overcome, but it will be a thrilling time. I'm, and it will I'm be, sure. and, and absolutely, I share that. I fully share that. And you look at it that way, you know, there's probably a big and significant opportunity, which I think, you know, over, over the past year has been reflected and discussed. You know, you look at, you know, how things have developed so far, and that there's a dominance from, from the US, you know, the Western, yep. Western part, the West Coast, and starting also from China. So where is Europe in that game, right? I mean, that's the question which has now been, you know, been discussed on, on, on all levels. And I think, you know, looking at health and healthcare, I, I truly think there is an opportunity because the way systems are built today, they do not reflect all those fundamental aspects yeah. of ethics, right? And of our deep beliefs and values as societies, right? And as more people learn about it and more learn about also risk and, and value of data, the more I think they will come in a position where they, where they will ask for that, where they will require that. Now, here we go. We could build those systems, right? We can do this. I mean, we, are, we have an engineering power background, and gene yeah. background, so we can build those systems. We can build those data trust centers, um, you know, which are secure and uh, are regulated and which really truly reflect, you know, this, this aspect of, of transparency and, and the value and human rights, you know, and all the things. So, yeah. so that, you know, this is built according and along those principles and fundamentals. And that could, I think, become a competitive edge for us, you know, yeah. in the years to come. Yeah, no, uh, clearly. And I, yeah, nothing more to add, but very much agree with that statement that you just made on, on, on this kind of power play and power shift. So very great conversation uh, up until here. Um, it's been great to to get your perspectives. Now, summing it up uh, for our uh, listeners here to this podcast, what are kind of the, the key takeaways for, for you of, of what we discussed and, and also how this translates into the future? Right? As always in life, there's risk and there's opportunity when those transformations happen. I think that's just the dual nature, right? <laughs> Which yeah. we always, uh, yeah, always see and face. And, you know, in essence, you know, artist guy, I would say, looking at the world today, there's good things, but there is really clearly also significant shortfalls and challenges when it comes to health and healthcare, right? Which we addressed uh, before. And I think the age we are now in and with the future which has started offers a, you know, a historic opportunity, right? To overcome this, right? And, and shape, shape the healthcare of the future, shape the future of health, right? The way we want it yeah. um, to all 
you know, of our, our benefit yeah. and for better health. And that I think bottom line to me, you know, is what, you know, excites me unbelievably. And I can see that, you know, many others as well. So, yeah. so uh, kind of there, there is a movement going on yes. and, and uh, accelerating, it seems. Yeah. So for me, uh, clearly, one of the key takeaways was today uh, that that you're absolutely passionate and, and energetic in engaging and driving and realizing the future of healthcare, that there will be digital, there will be new, there will be uh, with new values and, and challenges to overcome, but very passionate about that. Second, I think there is no doubt that we will see a transformation of our healthcare system that will be, however, need to be fostered at the intersects of various players and, yes. and working more in, in ecosystem, more in concert together um, and crossing bridges and boundaries there. And also we as a society, um, we will see towards and we are seeing towards great benefits and, and opportunities that might arise. At the same time, we need to also engage into a societal discussion of what we as a society want to see, want to allow, and uh, at some point probably don't want to see and don't want to allow. So there, there is a societal discussion uh, inevitably needed going forward. Very true. So with that said, Peter, thanks again for, for great perspectives, for Thank great you, openness Thomas. and uh, really a pleasure to, to have you here and um, get your perspectives. Great pleasure. So with that said, uh, thanks everyone for listening. Um, if you are interested in more information, as always, please go to our website and download uh, latest perspectives and, and thoughts. And uh, we very much look forward to uh, cutting our next episode um, in due course, where we are rather seeing a different perspective more from the technology side, more from the startup side um, on what they think uh, the future of healthcare is up for. So thanks very much for listening. Have a great day and bye-bye. Strategy and strategy made real.